Hello, my name is Martin Bell, and I am an independent consultant, the Martin Bell Partnership, specialising in healthcare IT. I'd like to talk with you today about digital healthcare, digital apps in health and care. I hope you enjoy the video. Cheerio. We already use our mobile phones for a wide range of things these days. Everything from booking hotels, trains, holidays, to online banking and Friday night pizza. Increasingly, we use our phones, or want to use our phones, for healthcare. Many people already have Fitbits and similar devices or apps that measure the number of steps taken in a day or track weight gain and loss, for example. Whether at home, at work, or on the move, we want to access things digitally, because it's easy. But of course, healthcare is often complex and not easy. There are apps already out there to access your personal health record, although mostly only enable access to GP records at present and only where those records have been made available by your GPs. Companies such as Evergreen or Patient Access from EMIS or iPlato provide these. There are apps to order prescriptions and get them delivered to your home, such as Echo or again apps such as Evergreen and Patient Access. With young and old alike, increasingly using digital more and more, with near universal coverage of smartphones across the population, we are on the verge of a digital health revolution. However, in all of this, we must also remember that we cannot forget those who find digital hard to use, or indeed, do not have access. We have three questions to ask. Firstly, with around half a billion health apps in the Apple and Android stores, how do clinicians know which ones are safe and useful to recommend or prescribe? And how do patients know which are the best? Secondly, how can NHS services in the UK transform to meet the needs of the digital age when healthcare services are already stretched and finances are tight? Thirdly, how can digital health suppliers and providers work with NHS clinicians, managers and organisations to deliver augmented care, different service models to work with the NHS rather than just thrusting tech upon them? A recent trial by Google DeepMind and Moorfields Eye Hospital showed diagnostics around eye disease of similar rates to those that a doctor might initially diagnose. This was a meaty piece of work and has been widely praised. However, the very nature of the digital marketplace, aside from the digital health marketplace, is that with 75 health apps alone being added every day to the global app stores, that kind of clinical trials rigour used for medical evidence is very hard to do, impossible, one might argue, in each case. Juliet Bauer and Hazel Jones and their teams at NHS Digital in England have been doing a lot of work in this space. They have developed the NHS Apps Library with over 70 apps in it now and growing all the time that have been through a rigorous assessment by a company called Our Mobile Health. That looks at usability, data security, interoperability with other systems, a range of factors to give a level of comfort that the apps selected are better than many others available. The NHS itself is now delivering the NHS app, which will enable online GP appointment booking, repeat prescriptions and online information. Of course, these things do exist in other apps already, as we touched on earlier. All the GP system providers have a number of personal health records, and there are a number of ways that you can digitally order prescriptions. And this leads us nicely to the second question. Perhaps the key challenge, even more than the challenges of the new technology, is adapting existing services to work in a digital age. Why can't you Skype with your GP? Why can't you telephone your consultant? Why can't you chat at WhatsApp style with your district nurse? Well, the answer is you can. You can technically, of course, as the technology exists. You can in real in some cases, but there is no scale uh, to these different models of delivery at present. It depends on where you are, and overall they are very limited. You can access your GP record if your GP has made this available. You can book appointments with your GP online, but it requires your GP to have made those available too. You can book hospital appointments online, but e-referrals only covers first GP to consultant outpatient appointments, around 30% of outpatients recorded in England, and to reach 100% will have taken 15 years if the target is hit at the end of 2018. The challenge, the point... Alongside any snazzy new tech must come the transformational piece. 
That means engagement with clinicians and service managers, funding the headspace for these experienced professionals to work with digital colleagues inside and outside the NHS to deliver new ways of working and the funding to enable this transformation to take place. Even with the recently announced 3% or so of additional NHS funding, independent analysts such as the King's Fund, the Nuffield Trust and Health Foundation all feel that 4 to 5% is required to get ahead. And with this transformation, we must ensure that the same high quality of care is delivered. You may have read about a number of doctor-on-demand services, mainly operating in the private sector at the moment. For example, Babylon. There have been many serious concerns raised around the quality uh, of the answers to a number of the artificial intelligence engines used by these organisations for diagnosing and triaging patients. Babylon's NHS GP at hand service in London proved very popular amongst younger, fitter, more mobile patients with over 25,000 signing up and very high levels of satisfaction. But it didn't quite fit the way GP practices are paid and how they operate, nor did it reasonably deal with the harder, sicker patients to manage. This desire for digital health services needs matching to the need for safe digital health services. There is no such thing as digital health in reality. There are only health and care services, some of which now and in the future will be enabled and delivered via digital. This leads us to the final question. How can digital suppliers and providers work with the NHS and healthcare professionals to deliver digitally enabled services? Despite what is said, there are many examples of digital and information technology supporting healthcare on a day-to-day -day basis. It may be a longer journey than many would like to a digitally enabled NHS, but the journey has definitely begun. MedExNote are working with Southampton, a global digital exemplar, to deliver clinical chatbots to support clinicians in their day-to-day -day clinical activities and provide a new way to connect with the electronic patient record systems hospitals increasingly have. Healthy.io are working with Salford, another global digital exemplar, to deliver their DIP.io solution, which enables home-based urine tests without the need for the patient to travel and the impact on their day, but also the transport and parking issues often faced. Elemental is supporting the NHS, local government, housing associations, charity and community to manage the non-medical wellness of people, supporting them through social prescribing to help them and their communities become and stay healthy. Innova are working to support people in their homes around medication and surveillance to help keep them out of hospital. There are many organisations, large and small, delivering a wide range of patient-facing and clinician-facing digital health and care apps. For certain, more digital-enabled health services are on their way, with technologies such as AI, video and telehealth all being used. Ensuring that there is both the evidence base around especially the more seriously clinical apps and the transformational change support to embed these suitably into healthcare and the NHS, supporting and enhancing clinicians in the care they provide, but not limiting or replacing or even worse, causing any harm to patients, will be the key to the success of digital in health and the speed of its take up. Thank you very much for watching and listening and I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Cheerio. Goodbye.